obviously somebody nailed it, probably had some kind of lumber, wood, something on a rack, completely dented it in, pulled this whole entire brace off for the opener and stripped it right off of it. Really? That's the trash star? That's the roll-up top panel. Yeah, but I'm not going to test it for the auto reverse because we you know when it's coming down, you put your hands out and you hold it. Right. I'm afraid that arm's going to push too much and it's going to rip that entire bracket right off the door. That, that bracket is actually glued on and mounted to the door. Well, they've kind of jerry-rigged it and tried to put a couple screws in it to hold it. So basically, so, you need a new door. Or a new top panel, which is about a third less money than replacing the whole roller. Now, if you're kind of thinking, I might have a nice insulated roll-up door out there. I work in the garage a little bit. Okay, it's cost a bit more money, but you might just want to say, oh, I want a credit. Put that towards the roll-up that you might be paying yes. a little bit more for than just this layer thin. This right. is your bottom of the line roll-up door. So. Yeah. But anyway, um, they hit it with something. I don't know how they did it, but they it's did it. That's a roll-up door, right? Uh-huh. It's, it's, it's electric door, right? Yeah. It's it's like you're saying that you do want to test the emergency when you pull the cord in. Pull it back up, is that what you're no, you want to hold it down. When, when, the, when the garage door opener is pushing the door down and rolling right. it down, you put your hands out and grab it, and it should kick in reverse and start going back up. Again. Oh, you did want to do that. Part, I, if right? I do that, I did that one time about 18 years ago. Ripped the, Ripped whole, the whole thing, thing right off the door. Okay. I had to pay for it. Oh, yeah. okay. So, $600 later. Yes. Yeah, I lost all the money for the inspection, everything, just because right. I decided to test something that was mm. obviously damaged and, right. yeah. And they were right. If I, they would have sued me. I would have lost. They were, it wasn't even worth it because mm -hmm. you could prove that it was already damaged. And this one is very damaged. So that's why mm -hmm. I don't want to take the chance on it. Um, this would be underneath the furnace up in the attic. Mm -hmm. And you can see all the rust in the pan. This is a catch pan that's underneath. This is called the coil pack, which mm -hmm. is where your condensation is made for the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. If, for whatever reason, the hose in there, sometimes rubber, sometimes plastic, was to get hard enough and crack and break, it'll start leaking out of that unit and not go out this PVC pipe. It'll start dripping into the pan. And it's there for a backup emergency mm -hmm. in case that was to ever happen. At least your sheetrock ceiling doesn't get sopping wet. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, the problem is with all that rust in there, it shows that it has been leaking in the past from the air conditioner running. Mm -hmm. So we need a little disclosure from the sellers as far as, oh, yeah, we had that fixed about two years ago, and yes, we know it was doing it. Okay, why wasn't the pan replaced? Right. The rust never stops. It'll yeah. eat through that entire oh, pan yeah, yeah, until yeah. it's yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. And I never, you never say anything about the HVAC and the things. No, did they you? didn't. I'd rather no, 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 yeah. yeah. okay. they didn't call it out. All right. Well, anyway, um, that's just going to be something that uh, okay. we want a heat and air company to come out, take a look at it, see what it costs is going to be to replace the pan. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you have to lift the entire furnace unit in the air to pull the pan out from underneath it. All the weight, these good little brackets right here that this is sitting on, those mm -hmm. are in the pan. So all that has to be lifted in order to get those brackets out to get the new pan in. The pans have to be handmade at the heat and air conditioning company, folded, bent, hole cut, welded, everything. You cannot go to Home Depot and buy one. Mm -hmm, okay. Has to be handmade. Woo woo, whole dollar cover plate in the attic. <laughs> just missing. This is the switch to turn the light on in the attic. So anyway, this is just switch. a cover plate. Is that on a it. cone? It's a cone in the attic, yeah. Okay. You cannot have an exposed switch, outlet, anything, or even a junction box up in the attic where they splice all the wires together. So it's not a cone. You said it does have to have a cover plate by code. Okay. All right. yeah. I know it's okay, it's there, so it needs a cover. It's a buck, but I mean, you know, yeah. for whatever it's worth, there you go. Okay, Joe Homeowner decided he wanted to have some nice attic space up there to put all of his belongings in. Put some plywood up there and everything. Unfortunately, the hole that he cut in the ceiling does not meet the fire code. So he put a hole in the fire code? Yeah. The original access was right here in the hallway uh, mm -hmm. to go up to the furnace. Well, now he's on the other side coming back this way, basically. Um, and yes, it can be done to where it would meet code, but this just is not it. So basically, you would have to call a sheetrock company They'd have to come out, analyze it, see what can be done the easiest way. Normally, where it comes on the ceiling, it has to wrap up two inches into the hole. Then your 5 8 fire retardant sheetrock sits on top of that lip all the way around the rectangle. Then you just use your six foot, eight foot ladder, whatever it is. Did they just put a new uh, so, entry in there that's on? Uh huh, yeah. You just anything that'll pass code. Now, if you wanted a. Um, well, we will be using it. We will never be using it. We've never used it. For storage. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, but we just wanted to pass code. 
yeah. or the VA. Yeah. Right. right. The right. problem we've got with this right now the is it allows your insane. fire insurance off the hook. Yeah. If your car catches on fire and the fire marshal has to come out and write a report up, right. has to no matter what, and he estimates, you know, that the <laughs> smoke or flame or whatever went through that hole. Right. If you have State Farm, absolutely, it's in the bylaws. Yeah. It says it right in. If you have a hole, pull down a ladder that doesn't meet the fire code, yeah. blah, blah, blah. We will not pay a dime on your house. So, okay. Okay, no. yeah. Um, now, a lot of people put in those pull down ladders. If you want to, you could put one of those in to get there for the storage. It just that ladder has to be fire proof, mm -hmm. not a Home Depot or a Lowe's. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And there's only one company around here that actually can get it for you, and that would be Homewood Lumber. Mm -hmm. street right there. And let's see here. Next, this would be the door coming in out of the garage into the house. Somebody yeah. got a little ticked off, I guess, and beat the hole in it, which means now the fire amount of it is no good again. The right. whole door has to be thrown away. Thanks for putting it on there. Whole the brand whole new door fire has door. to be, yeah. Yes. No, it's, it's not fire rated, right? Cause yeah, it's not anymore. It's not anymore. <laughs> it was, but they messed it up. Okay. About this much. <laughs> Uh, next, you know about this window here. All the rubber seals are coming out of it. Oh, oh yeah. 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 A piece of glass that has to be replaced. Okay. Which, which one? That one right there. Come on. See the yeah, bottom of the glass? See the black rubber? On the bottom of the window, it's yeah. all coming out. Okay, it's two windows. So that one's going to fog up for sure. Yeah, definitely. It's two windows, okay. Yep. Um, I'm not sure. It kind of almost looks like we had a little issue with the rays in the microwave. Um, not quite 100% staying inside of it. Normally, we don't get all this scratching, all of this rust, the paint coming mm, off, yeah. unless we've got leakage right here. Right. So somehow we've got a little bit of leakage on this door. Is it because is, is it not venting? Is that why it's so the condensate's getting inside the door? It, a couple different. Yeah, that's all right. possible. You're right. Any so scenario be, here could well, be blowing well, inside a potato. So yeah, yeah. blowing up a couple potatoes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, other than that, it does work. I mean, yeah. I, it does. I got a wet sponge in there. I keep my sponge up really good. But anyway, so that's kind of a little bit of an issue that it may start sparking on a little bit. Uh, these are very reasonable price actually. You might get a new one. Well, that passed uh, code. I mean, that's an issue at all. That's not, not a code, code issue. No code requirements on the microwave. Okay. Uh, this would be your garbage disposal, obviously. That would be a nice, huge crack running all the way down the side of it, and it is what leaking. Is that? What is that? It's leaking? The garbage disposal. Okay. Big old crack running all the way down the side of it. Yeah. Don't know how. Mm -hmm. okay. I mean, that's steel. <laughs> Pretty good, man. Somebody really got on that guy from the back, yeah, right? So it's leaking. So it needs to go in the garbage can, and a whole new one put in. Yeah. This pipe back here, you know how it comes off the garbage disposal and does yeah. an immediate mm -hmm. down pipe yeah. that comes with the unit in the box? That is also leaking right there at the nut, also. But it doesn't really matter because I'm in the thing's toast. Is He's going to the garbage issue? can. Is that a code issue? No. No. Okay. no. Um, this is water coming down right here that's running out of this and running all the okay. way down. Yeah, so it's done. Uh, these are $75 to buy at Home Depot plus labor and everything to put one in. So you're looking about $150 to $200. So go back on, on that down there. If it's been leaking, yeah. has the cabinet area down there been uh, Not well. Has it been it's right? Right? It's, it's mellowing. If it's content. No, I mean, there's rot, there's no me, no but you'll see water all over the no, okay. 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 Uh, Next, I've got uh, one, two, three, four windows in the house that all the springs are busted on the single hooks. You know, your single hooks go up, you have a spring in the track right here on both yeah. sides when you slide them up. Uh, all three of the ones in the living room are all broken, and I believe uh, bedroom one, I think, the first bedroom we come to, that one's also broken. So they won't even stay up. Actually, hard to get them up since the springs are broken, and right. you've got like one, so you start to come up, and it does this thing and jams on you. So, which windows are there? All, all three these. living. The single hungs, not not this one on the left here for the dining. That's a slider. All these the single hungs the ones going up. Yeah. 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 And I believe the first bedroom. Those average twenty-eight to fifty dollars a piece, depending upon the length of them and labor to put one in. So, yeah, you're looking around eighty dollars at least per spring. So, anyway. so those just need to be taken a peek at. Okay. Um, nickel and dime. The Phillips screw, this is on your master bathtub. You know, the overflow in case the water gets too yes. high, it goes over. This is just real loose. And you know, on the back side of the tub, it has that uh, black kind of a foam rubber piece that goes up against the back. So as you tighten the Phillips screw on yeah, this sure. side, it pulls it tight up against uh, that. Never leave. Seal. No, I can look right over the top of it. It's actually dropped down. So someone's going to have to loosen that screw up a little bit. 
pull that out enough that you can kind of bring this up, get it all seated, pull tight on it, and then you tighten the screws, you're pulling it, it pulls it in. It Is that a DIY? Is that just a DIY? Yeah, pretty much. You're not a professional. Anybody can do it. Okay. Yeah. I just would hate to see the tub fill up and oh, if the water go over it and go all into the wall and okay. into the floor. Right. Right. Is it that one too? No. No, no this, this one's okay. Three. There's three and, and four one in the first bedroom. The one in the pink room? The pink room. Yeah, yeah, the pink room. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. Okay, let's make sure I got them all. All right. Let me get into the body of the report here real quick, like. Outside around the grounds, not too bad. I think we just had fences out there. Yeah, both the east and west side. Almost every post down the west side is shot. Every one of the at the base, you can move that back and forth about two feet. Um, there's only one or two posts on this side over here that are really bad. And let's see here, exterior walls, didn't see any dry rot or anything in the walls or trim. I'll check some of the jams. Um, that's basically up to the pest and termite report, which I don't know if you've gotten that one yet. No. no it's not, okay, it's I see they've already been here. Uh, yeah. There's stickers out there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Did you see something that wasn't done? No, actually in good shape. Yeah. Yep. Very clear. Uh, sprinklers and everything were okay there. Uh, oh, the chimney is basically nothing more than just it goes up, this elbow and goes up the sidewall. You don't have the big chimney that goes all the way up because it's a gas, gas right. fireplace. Yeah, you yeah. just have a little flue pipe. That's it. Okay. Pretty simple. Um, and actually, before we leave, there's one other sprinkler thing I wanted to check too before we leave here. That's kind of what I got done. Uh, hose faucets. Oh, you know where the, the hose bibs are outside, where the handle is on the top? Mm -hmm. Right under that handle. From going back and forth so many times turning the faucet on and off, that nut right underneath them do loosen up a little bit. And they're all starting to leak. So if somebody sees you go around and take a crescent wrench and tighten every one of those yeah. nuts up. I notice almost every one of them are leaking when I turn them on. Okay. So, I mean, that's a freebie, but anyway. Gutters, downspouts look great. I was really happy to see the downspouts in the backyard are actually tied into ABS pipes that are going underground and out to the front. Like a French drain? Yeah, like a French, but it's not. It's a hard pipe. Oh. All the water goes into a pipe, and the pipe takes it all the way out to the well, front. Well, what about the drip on the corner of this gutter right here that's dripping straight down? It's strictly the back corner, unfortunately, of the uh, the way they've got it underneath the felt paper. The that's reason normal. why that's is normal. there's two roofs on this house. They didn't strip the first one. They put a second one on top of this roof, and when they did that, they didn't overlap that gutter correctly. So it's dripping. So does it need a seal on or what? Really? I have no idea what it's going to take. That's going to be a roofing contractor. going to have to come out and look at it. For the seal. gutter? Just yeah, okay. just that corner. Just that corner, right? That's okay. the only one I saw that was looking. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Foundation looks perfect, though. A plus on all of that. Uh, roof also A plus. It's just you got two layers up there, uh, which is fine. This roof looks like it's you know, hard to say, but you know maybe five or ten years old. It's pretty on the newer side, so you got a lot of life left on it still. Thank goodness. And it looks like a twenty-five year. Out of 20. Yeah, a little okay. better dimensional composition roof as opposed to the cheaper style of the 20 year roof. Why would they, ever, why would they, replace, the, why would they put, replace the roof on it for the 2002 house? Good question. That's the same. Mm. Okay, so no you have to ask her that. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's a big, huge issue. Um, let's see here. Well, there's been four songs on the side. 50 pounds of water pressure, so that's good. Also, your water pipes in the house are not copper, they're actually the PEX water line, the plastic. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. No problems with that at all. Okay. Um, this is not the defective brand. You have one plastic pipe that oh. was defective, falling apart, millions of dollars in lawsuits already. They just won a $700 million class action lawsuit against them three months ago. They're out of Canada. Yeah. 2000 to 2004 is when that was being used. Okay. You luckily don't have it. Great. Um, Furnace, we talked about up in the attic, it's a 60,000 BT furnace, color of the flame, everything was perfect on it. Good distribution, the ducts all looked good. Air filter's actually clean, just, you know, right there in the hall ceiling. And the uh, filter was okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing I'm just gonna call is that rust and that catch paint yeah. up there. So let me come out and take a peek at that and see what's going on with it. Um, AC came on, ran beautiful, no problem. I just can't run it for 20, 25 minutes, use my thermometers and see how cold the air gets. I will fry that poor little guy out there before I'll ever get to that point. You can go about five, six minutes on an air conditioner before it starts heating up so much that you can actually fry it. Because it's too cold outside. It's way too cold outside. You got it. Okay. Exactly. But I can at least turn it on for a few minutes and go out and make sure the bearings and the motor and everything sounds smooth, so quiet, okay. it's running. If the Freon was to be low, you would just turn that into your home warranty company. They'll come out and okay. fix the Freon on it. 
but I just want to make sure it passes that it runs correctly, okay. has the right size of breaker for the unit, and it does. Okay. It's max 40, it has a 40 amp breaker, it does have 50 or something like that to avoid a warranty. So anyway, electrical, nice big 200 amp panel, it's only half full of breakers. Oh, wow. You can run the guy's house next door if you wanted to, what's left on oh, wow. this thing. Well, this could have had 100 amp with no problem, but they put a 200 in, it's gigantic. Wow. So, oh, a lot of room if you ever wanted to, I don't know, have a spa or something like that. Oh, okay. of room in that panel, okay. no problem at all. Uh, no jerry rigging in it, no two wires on one breaker, double lugging on neutrals, all that kind of stuff I usually get, nothing. Okay. Got a lot of light bulbs burnt out in the uh, house though. Outside patio lights that people left on, some of the lights in the bathrooms are burnt out, you know, okay. stuff like that, so. Okay. Um, so on the electrical wise, that cover plate missing up in the attic, mm -hmm. the doorbell button you may have noticed is broken, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so it went ding or dong until that button gets properly replaced. Other than that, all the outlets in the house are grounded properly. Three-way light switching was done properly. Nothing wired backwards. Um, I don't know if you happen to be in a house before where the electrician actually turns the outlet yeah, upside uh -huh. down. Mm -hmm. Top half of all the upside down outlets are switched in this house. Bottom half is hot all the time. Oh. So if you walk into a bedroom and then, oh, there's one upside down over there. The top half right. of that runs off the switch when you walk in. Okay, so what about the, the first bathroom here? Um, the three, it's a three toggle. Mm -hmm. the three, first toggle doesn't do anything. What is that for? Light and ceiling in that fan. There's an exhaust fan no, and a light the in the second, middle. The second one was a... There's one... The first one doesn't... Sure, we'll take a look at you. Yeah. So the fan Okay, anything else exciting electrical? No, beautiful. Interior, we got uh, doors damaged. Of course, the bedroom too. Also, somebody put a nice hole in that second mm -hmm. bedroom door. Yes. Also, besides this fire door. Yep. Um, the fixed pane of the sliding glass door we know is already fogged, and the screen is missing on that sliding mm -hmm. glass door. I don't know where that went to. And then, as far as our windows go, we do have one more fogged window. That would be at bedroom number one. Right there, that bedroom. window that's facing the back right here, yeah. the fixed pane on the top is fogged. Okay. Show you real quick. Um, you will not be able to see it from the inside. If you look, well, if you look just right, you could, but it's just starting. It's probably the last of the year. What's wrong with it? Yeah. We can see the fogging, see these streaks. If you yeah. go back and forth, you'll see a streak all the way up there, all these streaks here, all these streaks, all, all of this right here, it. even over here, here, yeah. all that's on the inside. Yeah. Well, so that one's fogged also. Okay. That was the only other one I found. Did so we've really got... Uh, did you put some of the left hand? So, yep. okay. so you've got the one in there with the black rubber coming out, right. this one, okay. and the sliding glass door. Plus the There's spring. only three I found. Yeah, that are fogging. And okay. then, yeah, the springs. Okay. This guy, unfortunately, is going to be about $300, because it has to be taken. Um, fog, we got springs damaged, we got, oh, window latch. This left window latch, no matter, oh, if you see the spacing on the white plastic, and all of a sudden it comes up. There's yeah. only just a little bit of space yeah, here, yeah. a big one there. Yeah. I don't care how much I can pull down that, I got up on top of the counter, push down the thing, I still can't get that to come down the latch. So I don't know if the frame's out or something's wrong, so whoever we have come out and do the windows uh, needs to also throw that one in the mix and see if we can get that one to lock or latch. Oh, yeah. You can last that side at least. Also, if it's not latched, is there air leaking in? Mm -hmm. yeah, more than likely. Okay. Walls, ceilings, yeah. floors, <laughs> all look good. Of course, you have four different kind of floors. We have four different kind of floors? And you've got carpet, laminate, linoleum, and tile. So this is all laminate. It's it's like all a, is it like a pergo or no? Yes. It is exactly a pergo. Yes. And it's then what in the, in the front bathroom that's laminate, right? In this one bathroom? Yeah. Is, no. Um, 
What do you have in there? Was that tile? I was trying to think the only linoleum is in the laundry room, I think. That's the linoleum, but it looked like kind of linoleum in there, but maybe I'm wrong. I'm trying to feel it. That is And fireplace. It is set up for a fan kit. You, oh. If you mm -hmm. open up okay. the bottom half, you'll see there's a little plate in there. It gives them brand and the model number. You just call somebody up. Matter of fact, um, just let them know what the model is. They'll tell you what the cost will be for them to come out and put it in. It runs about $140, $150. Okay. Okay, um, anyway, so some of those kind of things I'll, I'll add it in here just so you have it anyway. Okay. Um, and let's see what else. Okay, uh, carbon monoxide got installed, that's good. Oh, you maybe noticed the chirping. Yeah, some of the batteries. Yeah, low in the smokes. Yeah, okay. It doesn't take long to spread your plug away. Annoying as they are. Uh, let's no, on this carbon monoxide thing. Yes. Are they supposed to have them? Or what was supposed to be outside of the, the bedroom? Inside, inside, the inside bedroom. of the bedroom? Oh, the bedroom the hallway door. outside the bedroom. Yes. A hallway outside the bedroom? That's correct. Cannot be in the bedroom. Oh, the other inspector said by law had to be inside the bedroom over the door. Oh, no, that's the smoke detector. Oh, so, it's a smoke detector. So smoke to all smoke detectors are inside. Inside the bedrooms after 1989. Right. Okay, carbon. Okay. Just one. But right? the carbon monoxide has to be in the hallway outside the sleeping area. Okay. 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 But the but smoke, you're right, has to be hall and bedroom. Oh, first, first okay. Yeah. Okay, that's okay. Pretty simple. And let's see here. Laundry. Nice laundry. You got 240 electric and gas in there. So either way you want to go in the dryer. Um, right now, what do you got? Electric? Yes. Okay, it's an older one, like more than eight years old. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> There's a, uh, I don't know if you remember the uh, harness plug on the end of the 220, if it's a three prong or a four. Three. Okay, yes. most of them are three prongs after eight years old. This, since it's a newer house, has the four prong. So you're going to have to buy a whole brand new pigtail for it. Because oh it's a four prong. They don't make an adapter from three to four. Uh, they don't allow you to do that. They're afraid of fire. So they literally make you buy a brand new three to four foot long pigtail. You have to undo the three screws, take the wires off, and put a brand new pigtail from the back of the dryer up to plug it in. Yeah, just know that that's going to come up. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay just... <laughs> Go buy a four prong pigtail. Yeah, I know it's kind of stupid. Yeah, anyway, uh, insulation was fantastic up in the attic, about eight inches deep. Um, they wrapped this entire house with that aluminum kind of paper, like a tie deck, yeah. but it's aluminum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that way the attic doesn't get all boiling hot in the summertime. I mean, it'll stay only about 80, 85 when it's 100 outside up in this That's attic. Nice. They wrapped it, well, so the energy efficiency of the home is yeah. like perfect. Well, if you get the windows all working. Well, there's always that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, this entire roof is a trust roof where the you know the rafter ceiling joists and the webs go up and down. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. This is not a hand cut and stacked roof. Okay. Um, and then out in the man cave, what have we got out there? Firewall. Oh, the attic access going up. <laughs> Doesn't need the fire code, obviously. Joe decided to put that in himself. I'm thinking. <laughs> um, ventilation, quite interesting. I'm not sure how they got it to pass code, but I guess they did because the building inspector passed it. There are no vent screens in that garage out there. Usually you'll see, you know, just yeah. at the foundation level, a foot up or so, you'll yeah. see a rectangle screen. You need to move the rectangle screen down here yeah. to allow airflow in the garage. Yeah. If there is a gas combustible unit. If there's not, then they don't have to do it. Unfortunately, the water heater's out there. Right. Only way that passes is a fully sealed water heater, which right. if you take off the front of it, you'll notice the whole entire front where you would normally put your thing in the light, the pilot light, right. it's all sealed with a little round glass that you look through to see in there. And those vent through the actual exhaust coming down, so you don't have to have venting. This is not that unit. Oh. This is all wide open, plain, and everything. Okay. 
I'm not sure. I mean, maybe they're saying, ah, we know that their air is leaking around the roll-up garage door, and there's going to be enough air out there. And eh, that's cool. That's probably true, too. Yeah. A little odd, though, that they didn't make them put in any screens mm -hmm. out there. So my report's going to show there's no venting around the garage. Okay. So just yeah. know it. I've just been here this long, and I haven't done anything weird with the water heater. But anyway, mm -hmm. we already know the door's damaged. Uh, roll-up garage door, the dents and everything in it, it's pretty much done. Yeah. Uh, garage door opener did work, however, I just didn't give you all the others. Mm -hmm. uh, electrical in the garage, GFCI, everything out there was perfect. Matter of fact, um, the bathrooms are separated off of the back patio and garage outlets. So if you're on that back patio, corner mm -hmm. of the house out there in the stucco, and you put something in, it pops, the garage GFCI is the one that runs that outside. Not the so you're tripping the either. It's tripping the GFI in here, which is awesome. Okay. Code allows you to go from the GFI in the garage right to each bathroom. So all the garage outlets and the bathrooms are all on the same circuit. It's oh. legal. Can't stand it because it's usually a 15 amp circuit, which is 1500 watts. Yeah. You ever look at the side of your hair dryer? It says 1875. Yeah. Why is it not 1875? Yeah. The circuit only takes 1500. Well, so 1875 is taking it to the max. We can imagine if you have a refrigerator, freezer, right, something right. else plugged into the garage, and that compressor kicks on the same time you pull your yeah. trigger on your hair dryer, it trips the breaker all the time. This one won't do that because they separated the garage completely off the bathrooms. Nice. Hallelujah. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. Okay. When <laughs> they didn't have to, this electrician probably just says, I don't want to call back. What about the, do where's it. the kitchen? Is the kitchen? Where's the kitchen, kitchen? separator. There's two 20 amp circuits. Half the kitchen here and the other half around this way. Okay, got it. Totally okay. normal. Good. Um, but anyway, just want to let you know that. If, so if you have like a little small air compressor or anything else that you might use in the garage that pulls a lot of amperage, don't worry about the bathrooms. Right. But a lot of people okay. know that, okay. that they can do bathrooms. So anyway, um, that was it there. Our beautiful kitchen. A couple of cracks in the tiles on the countertops. Yeah. Um, Chips noted in the kitchen sink. Garbage disposed all toast. Mm -hmm. Oops, I don't put that in the report actually. I'm a little more polished than that. <laughs> but anyway, it's done. Uh, the range oven, bake broil, all four burners, everything's perfect. This does have a separate broil on the top. It's not the cheap one that has the bacon broil. All there's one underneath, one on the bottom, which is your lower end model. This actually has a separate element down here and another element at the that's top a, of the broil. That, that's, on, uh, that's on a little holder at the bottom? Is that is. Bottom? This is the bake elements down at the bottom. Oh. Yes, that's just for sticking pans and stuff in. Okay. Usually if that's bake and broil, you know you can't store anything in there. That's your broiler pan down right. there. But not in this case. It's okay. your storage. Great. So it's a little better unit. And uh, dishwasher, yeah, it's just a one-arm dishwasher. It's kind of a little lower end. It's not even a two-arm. So yeah, it does work real good. It had no uh, leaks in any of the discharge hoses, no leaks underneath the sink, except for just that garbage disposal. Okay. So the rest of the valves are doing good down there. Um, the only thing I'm going to mention is the rust marks from the microwave. So mm -hmm. obviously it's doing a little something weird in there. Mm -hmm. And last is the two bathrooms. Both toilets were perfect, which is odd. No leaks, no looseness, no cracks in them. Uh, sink wise, great. I filled the sinks all up to the brim so the water goes over the overflow hole. Mm -hmm. And then get the plunger and make sure everything uh, goes down nice and smooth and fast. And then I can hand touch everything underneath and see if there's a leak. No leaks. Oh, nice. Really good. Um, the master tub overflow cover, we already talked about that Phillips screw, just needs to be adjusted. Mm -hmm. uh, showers were both great. Good master shower, actually. That's a nice Is thing. a seal in there? Uh -huh. that, yeah. yeah, very, very good, actually, on the seals. The glass doors are nice, no cracks in them. Uh, no reverse plumbing anywhere. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not <laughs> no. I'm actually liable. If I miss that, i got to pay the plumber to come fix it. Oh, no. Um, but, yeah, no, I, um, I was impressed with the bathrooms. They're in good. great shape. Good. Uh, the culture marble they used on some of the tops are in great shape too. So, anyway, very very good. I'm just kind of a small handful of a few things here, like the heat and air guy coming out, check that pan, and yeah, get and that right, else. and then maybe a, um, a roofing guy or whatever to check why that's yeah, dripping all the time out there, where it's not getting all into the gutter because it's it's leaking down past the bar drafter mm -hmm. and it's dripping off the wood, which means oh, the wood's getting run all the time. It's going to rot in the next couple of yeah. years. Yeah, don't want that happen. Right. So. Okay. Any other questions that you guys are thinking about that I didn't how touch much, on? How much more of that insulation do you, do you think we can put in the is attic? That, yeah, for the yeah. attic. We can touch it. It's it's good. Good. Uh, it would cost about great, 800 yeah. to 1,000 to add another, say, four or five more inches. You would have to be here for 20 to 25 oh. years just to get your 800 bucks back. I'm You're saying, saying no, no, yeah. I'm talking about the window. Yeah. The window's yeah. like a biggie. Like you said, this is going to be great. The window's and you got it. 
how big of a gap you said for the uh, for the offense? You said it was you're shaking. Oh, yeah. Some of these you you got over a foot of movement back and forth. I mean, just yeah, going like this. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, you can kind of see this one right here. How much it's leaning over towards the neighbor's yard. It's leaning uh, over four to uh, six well, inches as it it's is. It's a twelve-year-old fence, so. Yeah. Okay. And so anyway, um, but that's it. So what I'll do is I'll get this all done. Uh, pictures and everything that we looked at will be in there. I don't know if you happen to notice. Yes, I'm checking the boxes, but I'm going to put it a second time in red on the comment line. So that way if you look at a page and you see red, red, oh, okay. two things on that page. That's it. You don't have to go through all the boxes. Okay. Yeah, those, I'll have it tonight. I'll get it this yeah. morning. Oh, what, what, are those, what are the three, yeah. what are the three um, sewer, sewer cut out here for? What, what is it? In the driveway. Are we get into those?